Oh my god, every morning when Kevin tells me I love you, sometimes I get annoyed. <laughs> I think I'm like Kevin. <laughs> I'm like I think I'm like Kevin. Yeah. I'm like I'm gonna be like I love you. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. Love you. Yeah. I love you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's Kevin. That's Kevin. <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Small Girl Big Talk. Today, we are continuing on the Wedding Diaries mini-series that we have over here, where I have different guests and friends over to talk about the topic of wedding planning and marriage preparation, because we all know that that is a very big part of the adulthood journey. Like, if you are lucky to find the one mm-hmm. to, you know, to commit for the rest of your life, there's a lot of things that you really want to consider and get into it. Yep. And the process of wedding planning is very stressful, right? Yep, yep. Definitely, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. I think when we want to talk about the one, I think it's also very subjective. But I think to share about like our perspective on who we actually, you know, think about when it comes to the one, it's kind of like maybe good, you know, to share it with everyone. Because yeah. I think... Um, when we say about the one, like everyone have a different kind of like idea, mm-hmm. right? So maybe like for myself, like when I was thinking about the one, I've been thinking about it since I was like 21, maybe. Oh. Okay, right? 21's still quite old already. Yeah, okay, yeah. La. Not like since uh, you're a teenage girl or oh something. Oh my God, no, that's too early. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to have fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I think there are certain stages in our life where I think you will start thinking about the one, Mm -hmm. not necessarily if you're in a relationship or not in a relationship, right? Because I think we know like who we want to actually get married to at some point, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know about you, like how old were you when you were thinking about the one? Okay, so for me, right, I had a long-term high school puppy love. Oh. Like I dated my first boyfriend since I was 13. Wow. Till I was 20. Wow. So that's a very young teenage girl, mm-hmm. right? And at that point, I really loved him and I thought he was the one. And I, th- I tell you, like, even at the early stages of college, I was already telling my friends, like, oh, I'm getting married with my ex mm-hmm. when I graduate from university and I was planning everything already. Mm-hmm. Because back then, your idea about the world is very simple. It's based on what you watch on television. It's yep. ba- based yep. on what you see around your family and all that stuff. Yep. So it was pretty simple. So I thought he was the one. Like so I, how do you kind of like classify what is the one during that time? Okay, at that point, I just think that okay, I will find a husband and then we're going to start a family together and mm-hmm. we'll live happily ever after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so very simple as that. Lah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we grow up watching fairy tale, right? Mm. Like That's how things are quote-unquote supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, understand. but as we get older, there's no... We realise that there's no such thing as supposed to be. Everyone yeah. are very different individuals. Yeah. And we have very different circumstances in life as well. Yeah. Um, and... There's just no how things should be. Yeah. Um, but I guess in a way, both you and I are very lucky to have found someone that we are ready to commit to for the rest of our lives. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. that's why we want to kind of bring up this topic today on how do you know that he's the one? <laughs> and it's more so like, like you said, like it's our point of view on what yeah. we think, um, you know, should be the criteria and all that yeah. stuff. And in hopes that, you know, this conversation would kind of inspire our audience mm-hmm. who are listening today to think a little bit more about what are their values, what are the things that they want to find in their partner. Or is there even such thing as the one? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think when we talk about the one, right, back then as like when I was 21, for example, when I first started, thinking about it of course because we haven't been exposed to a lot of things yet I mean we are just with our school friends and you start going to uni and everything is still kind of like in that bubble yeah you know and I think at that time we always feel like oh my the one would be like you know handsome like tall um have a certain career and then like you know it's very like 
as if this person is so perfect, mm-hmm. you know. And when, as we get into like the real world, you know, like after we graduate and then we start working and then we realize that like, there's no such thing as perfect people, guys. Yeah. Right? And not even ourselves. I think we realize us ourselves are not perfect human beings as well. Yeah. And then you start meeting more men Mm -hmm. and you start, you know, dating them and you realize that everyone has their own flaws in their own way yeah. they have their strengths but they also have their flaws and no one is perfect yeah definitely I think for me um, the one kind of like change after like maybe I was like maybe 25 mm. you know like you went through like all these different relationships and you know you get disappointed but then finally you realise that you know I think I should just be happy with like a few things that I could categorize in the one. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, maybe before this, you have like 10 lists mm. of like who is the one. Mm-hmm. But then you come to realize that there's no one that can fulfill all these 10 lists. Like this, this, you know? Do you mean like the criteria? Yeah, of yeah, the criteria. Like, okay, so what were the things that are in that list for you? So you kind of touch on, I feel like at the early stages when you're yeah. young, it's always like, oh, looking handsome. Yeah. I feel like the physical yeah. attraction part um, <laughs> is like a big thing when you are young. Obviously, yeah. it's like, oh, this guy is so good looking. Yeah. Um, so I guess like, the physical features is yep. one aspect of the criteria. Yeah, definitely. And then all these handsome looking guys just keep disappointing you. I don't know about you, but disappointing and me. So you've dated handsome looking guys. Lah. Yeah, because... <laughs> <laughs> Be- Sorry, my qu- I asked that question <laughs> because I did not know. <laughs> um, but the thing is, right, uh, my experience, I think when I was 25, that's when I like started to think like, you know what? I'm not going to even look at the looks anymore. Mm. As long as that person can still appear cute to me, Okay. then I'm okay. I mean, in my eyes. Because I think everyone's eyes have different, you know, views of like... Yeah, like different ways handsome. of what you like in terms of a physical yeah. features, right? But the as what I'm trying to say is that before I was 25, I've been dating all these people that, you know, have like two packs and like, you know, very good looking in that sense. But most of them are just very vain. <laughs> And I'm not saying that if you guys are handsome, then I'm trying to say that you are vain. No, it just so happened that the people that I dated Mm -hmm. and then they are more concerned about how they look. Mm. Can you imagine? They look at mirrors more than I do. Wow. And (laughs) and the one thing that I don't really like about this whole experience is that because they know that they're good looking, Mm -hmm. they can get whoever they want. Mm Mm-hmm. And when they think that they can get whoever they want, that's when they feel like, it's okay, like, you want to go away and, like, don't want to be with me anymore? Fine. I can mm. get whoever I want. So you find it very hard to trust that partner, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So for me, trust is a very big one. Mm. I think because in my first relationship, it kind of ended partially because I lost trust of my partner. Mm. Um, I mean, I left to a different country for university, right? So yeah. I was on long distance relationship. Yeah. And there was something happened before I left the country mm. that made me lost trust in my partner. I understand. And from there on, like the relationship was never the same as before. Mm. So for me, trust is a very important. Like if True. I cannot trust my partner, True. then there's no way I can True. want to like commit to you for the rest of my life. True. I think trust is actually a very big thing, I think, yeah. when it comes to like, you know, thinking about the one. Mm. Because if let's say, for example, your partner don't trust you, you, you don't trust your partner mm. and every single thing, it just become very like micromanaging in a way. Yeah. Right? Like, like where are be, you right now? Yeah, you'll be suspicious like, of everything. Like give me a picture of where you are. Yeah. Like, you know, and I think it's not a nice relationship to be in because... Yeah, no one wants to feel like they need to report to their partner all the time. Yeah. 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 We don't want it when our parents ask us where we are all day. Yeah. We don't want as an adult to have our partners to be asking the same thing as well. Yeah. yeah. I think in the sense of like, you know, updating and, you know, um, there are certain aspects that you still need to somehow like update your partners. Like, yeah. 
be like, hey, I'm here, but not necessarily like every five minutes. Yeah. You know, we're not asking you to like every five minutes, like tell me, oh, I'm eating now. Or, yeah. I'm going to toilet now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, like not that. in that sense, yeah. but more like sometimes it's also an update so that we know what can we do for our own plans. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay. Why I thought about this is because I think a few months ago, yeah. <laughs> both of us were quite annoyed that our partner were oh. bouldering. <laughs> And they were so into it that both of them were not checking their phones. And for me at that point, I just wanted to know if you're having dinner with me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was so annoyed and I was like ranting to my girlfriends. I was like, oh my God, this is so annoying. And so, <laughs> sorry, I just thought that that, that came up to my mind. And, and, it's, that's, yeah. and it's not that we didn't trust them. Mm. Um, in that sense, I think it's okay. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Because I think at the end of the day, you don't want also like go missing for like, Eight nine hours yeah. without telling your partner where you are, and then that's when suddenly you're gonna be like, hmm, why can't why is it so hard to just tell me that hey I'm gonna go bouldering, mm. um I'm gonna be very busy, but text you later, yeah. like you know something like that. I'm not yeah. saying that that's what happened to me, but yeah. I'm just, I just giving an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So besides trust, what would be like? For I think you? as I get older. Yeah. And when I'm ready to, you know, think about the potential of marriage, right? Because mm-hmm. I think marriage is the next level. Like, it's really different from just dating a person. Yeah, I think yeah. when you date a person, the stakes are much lower. When yeah. you get married to a person, it's really like there might be a chance where you need to rely on this partner mm-hmm. if you fall sick touch wood, right? Yep. Or if, say, you somehow got laid off by your company. Yep. Being married to this person feels like someone that you can rely on. Mm-hmm. So for me, I think the financial part, no matter what, is still somewhat important. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Not specifically saying that I want to marry a rich guy. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But I think to know that having a partner who is financially secure... Not necessarily like, you know, making a lot more and to be providing for everything. Mm -hmm. Um, Or even like say that that my partner has to make a lot more than I do. Because we were just talking about it in the last episode that we do live at a time where quite it's quite common for women to be the higher income learner in the relationship, right? Yeah. Um, So it's not in that sense, but it's more so knowing that this partner is someone that I can trust Mm. to provide for me financially if things go bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, some, yeah. Someone trustworthy with money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, meaning know how to managing their finances. Because at the end of the day, like, you can have like maybe little money, but if you know how to manage it and know where to kind of like put it in stocks or anything like that, then yeah. you have some sort of like safety net there somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Completely like you understand. don't want to date someone. Okay, I know that there are certain situations that may put someone in a debt for example, right? And I'm not saying that you should not marry someone if this person have a debt. Mm. I think situations can happen. Sometimes maybe it's a business failure. Sometimes it's just circumstances like you are forced to get into debt because of your parents' medical bill, for example, right? Mm. Just saying, right? Um, But such things are important things to be communicated. And also to see how they manage the debt. If yeah. this person is already in debt, but he's spending all their mon- his money like going out drinking every single night, mm-hmm. then then it gets worrying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So financials, I, I think it's very important. S- yeah, speaking. I mean, speaking of that, I do have a sh- story to share, but mm-hmm. it's not coming from me. It's actually from someone that I know back then. Uh. So um, it's very cute, like the way that the guy proposed to her. So basically, um, they just meet up during lunch, something like that. And then he literally take out his bank statements. Ooh. <laughs> and then he literally put on another piece of paper where he say, this is what I can give you every month. And this is what I can probably provide if anything happened to me. Would you like to marry me? Wow. <laughs> yeah, like I was like, that's a very unique. <laughs> it's so nice. I also want a partner that can give me, tell me this is how much you can give me every month. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay. But I mean, this happened like maybe when I was like 23. Wow. Yeah. And I was dating the brother. 
Okay. So it was the sister who got married. Okay. So that's how I come to know about that. Okay. So there are people who are also quite very transparent. Yeah. Like they try to be transparent with their partner just to know that like, hey, maybe I'm not even at that level yet or anything, but don't worry, I actually do have these plans. So I think I understand from your point of view, like the financial part. Yeah. yeah. And I think, but the thing is like with this financial thing, right? you can only kind of get into the conversation when you're deeper in the relationship. Like, yes, it's a bit weird course. if it's the first few months and yeah, then you Yeah, are. yeah, of course. It's like, why you want to ask me all this? Yeah, but like, maybe it doesn't necessarily be like how much you have in your bank and all that. Yeah. But like, just a general idea of like, how are you managing your finances? Mm. Like, I think you can ask questions like, um, do you invest? Or um, what are, um, I don't know, like, do you... Uh, keep maybe, track of your expenses yeah, and stuff Or maybe like that. even like Okay hey Every month How many percentage Do you like save mm. So It doesn't have to go into deep, You know like By saying like Oh I save 1000 ringgit Or anything like that mm-hmm. But it can go deep into like Oh I spend like Only 10% but then I save 30% every month from my salary. Mm. So then that kind of like give you an idea of like how this person is actually managing their finances, right? Yeah. So we don't actually have to go <laughs> deep so into deep it. into like give me your bank statement like how I, I shared just now. Yeah. But I think to have that conversation before you even plan to get married, yeah. I think it's also quite you know, quite a good thing yeah. to have. Yeah, and I and I thought about this thing. Um, it's it didn't happen to me, but I've had a friend, like a girlfriend, who comes from a family that is pretty well, mm-hmm. like well doing la, like yep. financially. Yeah. And so she's grown up being treated like a princess everywhere. Mm. Her dad and her dad was a self made man. Wow. Okay. Okay. So her dad was a self made man, and her dad has really did his best to give her the best life that she could get. Mm-hmm. And for her to start dating guys who are not at that level, yeah, I've that's the first time that I kind of observed that like, if you come from different social economic status, mm. right, it can be quite tough also. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Like yeah. if you've lived your life, your entire life being shown that it is possible to be provided for that way. Yeah. And your dad is a self-made man. It's not that it's inherited and all that, right? Yeah. There is some sort of expectations. So how did he, how does like... That relationship didn't work out with the partner that Uh, was not in a similar range. And I honestly feel that she looks so much happier after that they Mm, broke up. Um, Even though they look so perfect together, right? But you never know, like... At the back of what we see on the outside, how are Definitely. they struggling with? Yeah, like, yeah. have you watched? Did you watch Crazy Rich Asians? Watch what? Mo- sorry, the movie Crazy Rich Asians. Oh yes, yes, yes. You yes, did, yes, right? Yes. Do you yeah, remember yeah, yeah. the scene, Astrid? And whenever she shops outside and she comes home, yep. she has to get her servants to like hide all her shopping haul. Yeah, 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 yeah. That part, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. I thought it was exaggerating until my friend told me, like, oh yeah, she it has to exists. hide her. She has to hide her receipts from. Mm. Pro, from avoiding, you know, her from preventing her partner to feel like he's not enough. Yeah, he's not enough, or to feel like oh, you're just shoving it in my face that you can afford to spend like that. Understand? Yeah, and I was like, oh damn, that's tough, man. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's why I feel like financial as a criteria, it's very important. Um, in terms of compatibility, it's not even like yeah. I, in, initially, I was talking about security, but I also realized that financial, in terms of compatibility, is also very important. Mm-hmm. What, what do you mean by like, like compatibility? Yeah, like if you are used to spending in a certain way and then your partner is not, oh, it will right. be very hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like your lifestyle, say you prefer to eat steak every single night for dinner. Yeah. But financially, if your partner cannot meet that expectations in terms of lifestyle, yep. then it's very hard, right? Oh yeah, speaking of that, I remember there was this one time, I think we were like in six months of our relationship okay. between me and Matt. Mm. And he said that he was quite surprised to know that I'm quite a simple girl. Okay. And what does he meant by that? He's He basically thought that I'm quite high maintenance okay. at the beginning. Okay. I have this, I don't know why everyone have this like thought whenever yeah. they look at me, they thought I'm very high maintenance. Yeah. But actually... <laughs> I think, no, I think you're just very well polished. Yeah, so... Yeah. 
I think at first he thought that, you know, he would have to like bring me to all these fancy places and stuff like that. But I was like, it's okay. Let's go to like any cheap restaurant. I don't mind. Mm. So he, I think that's why also he was feeling a bit much more comfortable to kind of like continue our relationship even further. Mm. Because he didn't know that I would be so much easy to please in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that we want it to be that way. It's just, yeah. Yeah, I think that, the way okay, you the brought The word easy up. sounds bad. La, but, <laughs> okay, okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you mean though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I dated Kevin when he was still a student mm. and I started working. I was really at like the early stages of my working, like, you know, experience. So yep. we were really like... We started from the bottom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We would go to restaurants where it really meets where we can afford. And we only go for fancy meals every now and then. Like as we grow in our career together, Mm -hmm. like good thing we both are growing in our own ways. Then we start to be able to treat ourselves even more. Um, But back then at the early stages of dating, I think I didn't think too much into it yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and only it's it's only when we start to think about marriage and we start having that those conversations then yeah. this thing starts to be a little bit more important. Mm. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I I think for me when it comes to like the one as well, right? Mm. I I remember the first question that Matt asked me was that what I was looking for, mm. you know, in a relationship, and the first thing that I reply was. I need a constant. Hmm. Yeah. And what I meant by being constant is that at the end of the day, people change. Like sometimes even though how, okay, especially when we, let's say for example for you, you're like seven years, right? Yeah. At some point, there are some small changes of like how you view or how you think life should be, yes. you know, right? So change can happen at any time and it can happen when you change your career or when something bad happened to you so what I mean by constant is that no matter how much changes that happen are we able to still stuck for each other Mm. you know like because if just one change let's say for example I don't I don't have like any money anymore for example and then you decided you know what I can't do this anymore I can't Mm. love you anymore because I can't support you anymore yeah and that means that you're not being my constant right so that's what i told him that i just need that constant doesn't matter whatever wherever we are in our life Mm. we are going to be for each other Mm. and that's my main thing that i said to him so other things like like money or anything because everything can change at some point right you can have a lot of money now and then suddenly you went bankrupt Mm. And then what? Then what happened next? Yeah. Right? So, I, I don't know about you, but like that, that was like my main criteria. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think the reason why I wanted to talk about this is also because when it comes to committing to a person for the rest of your life for marriage, right? That's the scariest thing for me. Mm. Like, what if we change? and mm. But we are, we've already sealed the deal. Yeah. Right? I mean, these days you can get a divorce, but that's not... What, we, what want. we want, right? Why would you right. get married so to get a divorce? That's not, so to me, that's not even in the equation. Like, yeah. it's impossible. You have to think of it that way. That's how yeah. you can commit into this relationship, right? Yeah. And that's one of my biggest fear because even this six years, seven years that we are dating, yeah. we've both grown already. Yep. And there's been a couple changes in how certain things, how I think certain things should be um, has also changed. Like, at the start of the relationship, I was very comfortable just splitting the bills like together like uh, you know to be fair for each other but as I grow older and then I realise like oh you know you start to get influenced by people around you mm. um, and, and I have been through that phase where I start comparing myself to how their partners treat them mm. and how their partners are able to provide for more or pay for the meals and stuff like that and so we've been through a lot of tough conversations like that mm-hmm. um, and I think I also had to talk to a lot of different people to kind of figure out where do I stand in all this situation, right? Yeah. So, yeah, like that part is one of the things that I'm most scared of. Yeah. Um, but you were talking about how your criteria back then was to find that constant. I think for me, when the moment that I knew that Kevin could be the one for me was when I think about it and I look into the life that I grew up in 
like the because for me family is a very big big aspect. Mm. Um, I'm very fortunate to grow up in a very loving family. Mm. Um, even though we do have our flaws, we have our own traumatic experiences as a family yeah. growing up, and it wasn't easy at all. But generally, I am very fortunate to have two loving parents who have been there for me since day one. Mm. Even though they were really poor and they were really struggling, they really did their best to give us everything. So my family is everything to me. Yeah. And when I see that Kevin can get along so well with my yeah. family, yeah. and when they all loved him, that's when I knew that mm, I think he can be the one. Understand. Yeah, for me, that's a very big part. Like, to be yeah. able to assimilate into my existing family. Mm. Yeah. yeah, come on. I mean, like, imagine, like, if let's say your family doesn't like him yeah. and he doesn't like... The, and then every time you go on this family, you know, vacation or anything like that, there will always be like this tension, right? Yeah. And you don't want that tension. Yeah. Because if you have that tension, then you're going to be like, oh, can we, can we just not go with, with any family vacation anymore because I don't want to go through this. Yeah. Or right? the last thing is that I think we've also hit that stage where our parents are getting older and older. Yeah. And I do foresee that as we grow even older, I'll probably need to visit home more often. Hmm. And I want my partner to be able to come along with me and spend more time with my parents. Yeah. Instead of saying like, oh, why are, we, why are you always spending time with your family? Hmm. You know, so this is a very big part of um, like I would say the criteria for me to decide if he's the one yeah. and I do think that such values can you can influence each other with this because yeah. Kevin's a guy right and he comes from like three boys like he has two other brothers like mm-hmm. it's a siblings and and they only have their dad left and yeah. you know men they just don't express their emotions as much yeah. and I would be the person who would be like hey we should you know, visit your dad, plan plan visits to see your dad more often these days as yeah. we get older. And yeah. then last night he was like, oh yeah, I've not talked to my dad in a while. Mm. So he video called his dad. Aww. And his dad's like, what happened? Yeah. You know, and he's like, oh no, I just felt like I haven't seen you in a while. And you could see that his dad was so happy. Aww. Like he doesn't, you know, he tries to not show it, yeah, but I yeah. can tell that he's so happy. He was with his friends and he was showing his friends that yeah. all his son's calling him. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it's more like a guy thing though? Like, I'm not saying that all sons are like that, yeah. but the ones who are not like, because you know, like guys have, when they brought, they grow up, they have like this kind of like mindset that, oh, you cannot show your I think it's a family thing. Affection. Yeah, some families are more affectionate towards their sons as well. So then mm. it makes it easy for them to be affectionate. Mm. Um, but not uh, not all families are like that. And I generally, I think females are more. Yeah, that's why. Like I, daughters everything. are more loving. La. Yeah, that's why. Because I think it's quite common for like the daughters to be like, "Hi, dad," like, yeah. and then keep calling or voice co- video call, and then they'll be like, "Oh my god!" But then when it comes to like a son doing it, they'll be like. Why are you calling me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is your is your brother like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because like that's what I think. Like, I'm not sure. It's like if maybe it's just a guy thing. It could you know? be. It it's, could be. Yeah. I think it's both. Um, Kevin can be affectionate if he wants to, mm. but it definitely seems awkward uh, among his brothers. Understand? Yeah, their Understand. love language is different. Understand? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a big thing for me. Mm. Yeah. Is there anything else for you? I think from my side, I mean, now you're talking about family, right? Um, my experience is a bit different because I came from a broken family. Mm. Therefore, the way I look at marriage is totally different than those people who have never gone through what I went through. Mm. And the reason I'm saying this is because um, in my community, for example, it's very common that by 25, 26, like the girl should get married. Okay. You know, if you're not married by then, then there must be something wrong with you. Like this is, tr- this is the truth, okay? Mm. And I'm now, what, 33? And I, got, and I got like engaged when I was 32, for example, right? But from the age of like 25, 26 to like 30, everyone just keep on like, why are you not getting married yet? Like, mm. why, why? What's wrong? What's wrong? And I'm like, there's nothing wrong. It's just that I'm taking my time. Yeah. And the reason why I'm taking my time is because of like, for example, my mom went through divorce like twice. And it's all because of like, my stepfather and my real father are like, just, you know, they reach a certain point of their career where they kind of like have a lot of money. And at that time, that's when they decided to like, 
okay, maybe I can go and swing around with all the girls, the young girls and everything like that. Mm. So that's why I look at marriage very differently because I don't want to get married just for the sake of getting married. Yes. You know, like some people, they're like, hey, you're already together for five years. You should get married. But then you're like only 23. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like if you feel that it's actually a right decision to do and you know that like you're definitely going to be with this person like in the long run, then by all means, yeah. right? But at age of 21, 23, you're probably not mature yet to yeah. kind of like, if something happened, are you mature enough to go through this relationship together and know that divorce is not even in in the talks like you're not even going to speak about divorce right if you look at like some like in in the whole world like divorce rate are like super high as yeah, well it's getting higher in right these days, yeah. and it's because of like we don't think deeper into what marriage is mm. you know mm. we just do it for the sake of like doing it because society is telling us to do it our parents telling us to do it so in my criteria is that if i know like for matt for example I know that he doesn't look at other girls. Mm. And that's when I, my criteria is that. And how do I know is I'm a very quite observant, actually. Mm. So whenever we go out, whenever we go out as a group, I will always take a look at his eyes. Yeah. Like, She's always checking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like, what are you lo- looking at? Mm-hmm. Because for me, right, when you feel that it's okay for you to look around. For me, I, I know that some other people is fine, but for me, I find it's like you are making it as if it's a very simple thing that it shouldn't be a big thing. Mm-hmm. Then it's fine for you to do the big thing. Mm. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. yeah. So that's why I was like, okay, I, I see that like for the whole three years of us being together, I never see him like l- wandering eyes in that sense. And that's when I'm like, okay lah, I can, I can go forward with this relationship. Mm. And when he actually, you know, proposed and I said yes. Because mm. I have that trust yeah. in that particular area. Yeah. Yeah. I really think trust is so important. Yeah. Like yeah. for me, I also know for a fact that Kevin would not, you know even consider cheating on me. Mm. Like, that's how confident I am right now. Yeah. You know, I cannot say the same thing 10 years from now because yep. people change. Yep, right? Yeah, definitely. Right? But, because Kevin, he's a lawyer and he's such a justice warrior. He hates it when he hears stories about, like, girls cheating on their partners or, mm-hmm. or vice versa. Yeah. Like, he is... He's always so triggered by it. Mm. So much so that I feel like he would never cheat on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, these little things... Yeah actually matters yeah, right it yeah, really does yeah, yeah. yeah I think when it comes to thinking about the one it's very 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 subjective like what we're telling you right now doesn't mean that that is what like you know you what all, you have, you to, have to, agree. to agree on right yeah. but for myself I for example like I should get married I mean I should have babies before I was 35 that mm. is what everyone keep telling me, mm. right? Like, it's just that like biologically, it's yeah. ideal in yeah. that way. But, I mean, if you get married and you don't want to have kids, then that's fine too. Yeah. Right? Maybe, for example, your criteria for the, the one is to having a partner who don't want to have kids. Yeah. And that's fine. Because at the end of the day, as long as the two of you can agree on something and that's what the both of you want... That's what matters, you mm-hmm. know. It would be difficult if, let's say, for example, I want I want to have babies and Matt doesn't want to have babies. Mm. Then the first year of our relationship, of our marriage, probably would be like, I want babies, I want babies. But and then, like, like no to way. be honest, like even if you really want both want to have kids, yeah, it doesn't mean the baby is just gonna come to you just like that. Yeah, I've heard of so many stories of couples who have planned to have kids after their marriage yeah. but they struggled so hard and mm. it's so stressful for both parties yeah. to just try to make a baby yeah. and it loses that love and affectionate that you can give each other because both of you are so stressed about it too. Yeah. Yeah. And I so that's why I feel like whether whatever it is that you are looking for in a marriage, in a partner, 
I feel like the key is always to be able to commit and communicate with each other. Yes, communication. Yeah. yeah. Like you really have to talk to each other with the problems. I think when communication breaks down, everything breaks down. Yeah. I believe in that. Lah. I believe in that, but yeah. sometimes it's very hard to communicate though. Yeah, maybe just poke. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I always struggle with like me wanting to communicate, yeah. but me thinking about it in my head first, yeah. and then overthinking it, yeah. and then was not able to open up my mouth about what I want to talk about. Yeah, I'm like, am I the problem? Maybe it's just me. Maybe mm. I'm just overthinking, and I I'm always so caught up in my head in this. I think I can understand Because like from my, my side, right I feel when it comes to communication I feel like I over-communicate Oh, okay. Like I over-communicate my feelings And I think um, Matt probably going to be like Why you have to Why you have to be like You know, always feel about this way And everything mm. But it's just because I'm a very Expressive? Yes Expressive. I'm very expressive And if I'm sad about something If I'm upset about something I want to share So that my partner knows that Oh, this thing upsets her mm. Right? Yeah. But sometimes it depends on your partner as well If yeah. your partner is like Can you not tell me like every single thing? Then also like You need to find the balance yeah. In terms of communication I think it's right? also like Knowing each other's like yeah. Love language in a way What's the right way to tell them And what yeah. are the things that trigger them And yeah. what don't yeah. I think that's very important Oh speaking of love language Like is it also like A eh. part of your The one? Mm, I think I've never really thought about it okay. That much Okay um, But Definitely knowing my partner's Love language like us communicating our, about our love language mm. um, helps in, I guess, in a way to be able to know each other better mm. and to be able to commit and communicate with each other better. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Kevin is... What's your love language? Okay. So my love language yeah. is number one is uh, physical touch. Okay. Second is... Um, what is it the one that like to spend time together? Quality time? Quality time, yeah. yes. And then only third acts of service and a fourth is gift. Okay. W- and it's different with Matt. Okay, what's his act of service? Matt number one is gifts. Gifts, right? Yeah. Matt loves <laughs> gifts. He's so generous. Every time we go out with him, he always buys food for us. <laughs> That's that is Matt. hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's stressful actually. Yeah, it's yeah. hard for me because then like, you know, you always have to figure out like what different gifts to give him, you know, oh. like, you know. So it kind of like put a pressure on me, I think during the first year being together. Mm. Um, but after that, I just realized that it doesn't have to be like expensive stuff. Yeah. You know, it can be any type of gifts. Like it could be something that I did myself, like maybe origami or anything oh. like that. Mm. And I give it to him and he will be happy about it. Oh. So I think there's this also kind of like, prejudice against like people who love gifts as mm. their like love language because mm. then you feel that it's very surface like it's yeah, very material. materialistic yeah. it's no it's actually about like you giving something that maybe you make your own yeah and you give it to them and they're they're actually yeah really it's the thought that. of gifting that counts mm, yeah 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 i i think for me that um knowing my partner's love language at first it was not like a part of my the one. Mm. Yeah. But mm. as we go on into our relationship, it was more of like, can I sustain his mm. love language? Mm. You know? Because yeah. then meaning throughout the whole year of your marriage, like if you get married 10, 20 years, if you're lucky, if you're alive, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you have to keep, you know, it has, you have to sustain it. You have to keep, Giving that love language yeah. In that sense Yeah I think for you Because gifts is like The one that like Actually kind of Eats into the financial part as yeah. well, right? So it's more <laughs> stressful um, For Kevin His love language Is words of affirmation And physical touch Which is the opposite uh, of mine For yeah. mine is quality time And acts of service uh, So it's very opposite Yeah and, and how do you cope with that? Oh my god Every morning when Kevin Tells me I love you Sometimes I get annoyed <laughs> And at one point, I had to tell him, like, Kevin, for me, the word I love you, I want to mean it when I say it. 
And sometimes mm. when I'm annoyed by you, yeah. I just cannot tell you I love I you. I think I'm like Kevin. <laughs> I'm like, I think I'm like Kevin. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to be like, I love you. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. Love you. Yeah. I love you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's Kevin. That's Kevin. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, but, but so then I had to communicate to him. It's like when I don't answer mm. to, when I don't respond to your... I love you. It does not mean that I don't love you. Mm. Um, I just want to mean it when I say it. I so I had to communicate that with him. That's why I think it's very important to identify what's your love language. Yeah. Um, and then I had to remind him that quality time matters to me. Because yeah. sometimes it's like, I've been busy all day and then he would just come here, I love you and hug me and all that. I'm like, you did not put in the effort to show me you love me. Because for me, I want you to show me through acts of services or quality time with me. So knowing the love language really helps to like improve our relationship. I understand. Yeah, yeah and yeah, like you yeah, said, yeah. Like, then you, you'll be able to figure out if you'll be able to sustain the relationship mm-hmm. for the rest of your lives. Yeah. yeah, because I think the love language thing, I know it doesn't seem like a big thing to people. It kind of like become an afterthought yeah. most of the time because yeah. people don't look at it as like a must when you think about if you want to marry that person or not. Mm-hmm. But it's actually does play a big part because it's like your daily language to your partner, yeah. right? And if, let's say, for example, you can't cope with that, then it's going to be harder also for, because it's going to be something that that person always going to want. Mm-hmm. And for example, can your person also deliver the love language that you need from them? Yeah. Right? Like It's like me learning to hug Kevin more mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. telling him I love him more yeah. um, in my ways um, to, to kind of help us to be together better as a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. How about other things that I might think about? Oh, right. Okay. So, um, I think not many people kind of like know about it. Mm -hmm. um, But basically, like in our country, like, you know, we... I am am a Malay Muslim in that sense. And my partner is Chinese. So, um, one of the criteria that I would need, you know, in order to get married is that whether this person are willing to kind of like... Convert convert. to your religion. Yeah, because it's not my call. (laughs) If I can choose, I wouldn't want to. But, you know, but it's it's, it's a must thing. In Malaysia. In Malaysia. So, um, that is kind of like a big step as well, you know, for my partner. And if, let's say, he's not ready, then of course I'm not going to push him to kind of like go and get married with me, right? Because at the end of the day we have to know that we have to respect, yeah. you know, respect each other. Like everyone might have their own beliefs and, you know, uh, so you, you shouldn't force or anything. So um, when he decided that, you know, when he proposed to me and that's when I know like, oh, okay, then he's the one. Wow. Because he's willing to take that step. Mm. And to share as well that, um, before this, when we first, before we got together, I kind of like knew already, like, uh, I don't think this is going to go. Because we've previously, I had a very bad relationship, which mm. is also um, involving where the family doesn't want, you know, to acknowledge me because I'm not their race. I'm not, you know. And so at the beginning of our relationship, I told Matt that, we are probably won't be able to move forward to like, you know, if let's say you're not okay Mm -hmm. with converting. So um, I already told him early on in the relationship. Yeah, Yeah. even before we got into together, before we got together, you know, I already told him. But he said like, no, 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 and everything. And I'll be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I told you so. I told I, you I've so. given you a heads up way So don't, don't come and tell me that like you don't want to do it anymore because I already told you so. But mm. um, but luckily then, you know, he's willing yeah. to do that. And I mean, I'm so super grateful as well. Yeah. Because then maybe I'll just be together with him, not get married or something. Yeah, I'm not I sure. always feel very... <laughs> I always feel very sad for my friends who are being put in such situation. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like, everyone has their own opinions on how things should be. And I just feel like race and religion should not come into the way of 
two persons love yeah and their willingness to commit to each other for the rest of your life yeah um, true so like I really had to commend you both la. like I know we all have mm. our own stories we all have our own preferences when it comes to wedding planning and all but I know for a fact that for you both to even make that decision to get married together in the first place right it was a big it's there's a bigger stake at home yeah. Um and, and because I know that Matt's family is also his mom's Christian. Yeah. So it's another hurdle to get through and yeah. all these things. It shouldn't you shouldn't be put in this situation where you feel pressured about all these things. Yeah. It's just unfortunate, you know, yeah. because I think in probably in other countries like it's it's okay. Yeah. Like there's no such things and stuff. But um I'm I'm the kind of person that I believe that um, if you love someone and you love someone, yeah. you know, it's not because of like who that person believes or anything like that, right? Because mm. you love someone because of like how he is or how she is as a person. And if that person is a good person, then why shouldn't you like fall in love with each other? Yeah. Right? Like yeah. it's it's a it's unfortunate, but at least um, I mean, at least like me, me and him kind of like managed to go through it. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited so, for your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like my wedding is gonna be very quite interesting because we're trying to mix like both two cultures, two cultures together, and yeah. it's gonna be my first like Muslim wedding that I'm directly involved in. And yours are gonna be my first Chinese wedding. Oh, seriously? Uh, but mine's not very Chinese. It's though. okay. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay because I've never. I mean, my Chinese friends that I'm close with, mm. they're also not married yet. Okay, okay, okay. So, yours are going to be the first one. I'm very excited for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I think we've covered quite a few like important things that we want to talk about in mm. this episode. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to add on to this topic of like how do you know he is the one? I think um, to kind of like put in a general. Um, message out there is you you really have to trust your gut also at the same time I don't know about you but for yeah. me like because I think when you keep thinking about it you're overthinking it yeah and then it just become a big mess in a sense because you're like uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> that is true <laughs> yeah when we so, start doubting because of overthinking yeah then I think it becomes a problem yeah um, but if you start doubting because of your intuition then it's a different yeah, story yeah that's why I'm saying trust your gut trust, trust your, gut. your gut I think uh, it's very cliche but I believe in that like trust your gut and I honestly think that us females yeah. we really have the gift of our intuition yeah yeah like I think we would know if our partner is cheating as well yeah like we would have the there's radar. always this radar, the radar. there's always the sister's code as well for you to know yeah and you just know yes yeah so I think I think when it comes to like the one it's like what we said at the beginning it's mm-hmm. like very very subjective but I think by sharing like what we share uh, I mean sorry by sharing what we think of like who, who is the one maybe can share them a bit of light right like yeah yeah so I really enjoyed this conversation with you today. Same, same. I Thank you for love, having me. Yeah, I always love my conversation with you. <laughs> Thank and I'm you. so glad that now we get to record it and share it with the world. <laughs> okay, so if you guys enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube or a five-star rating on Spotify or whatever platform that you are listening to. And as we continue this series, we are still open to any questions that you have. So please, you know, you can always submit your questions into the form that I have in the show notes notes or you can also reach out to us on instagram i'm mm-hmm. going to include both of our instagram accounts can, can, on, can. Go ahead. on the show notes and thank you so much rj for coming on thank you for having me it was such fun to talk about this and i hope that you guys you know learn one thing or two or just enjoy enjoy the conversation yeah yeah so we'll see you in the next episode bye